Assalamu alaikum sisters, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the work video, Ahiran, finally. Uh, this is part of my Nikop Q&A video series, which I started maybe a year ago. <laughs> it has been probably a year that I ask you to send me some questions that you have regarding niqab or anything around it and thank you so much for all your questions you guys sent me so many questions that also have multiple topics inside each question thank you so much so i decided to divide these videos into topics okay, okay i just realized that i'm just messing up with the camera it just doesn't want to work or like my phone just keeps dropping and it's weird angle. I hope this is not like totally weird. So my break from YouTube extended for like six months and partly it was because I went back to work after maternity leave. Yay! So what better topic to start after a long break is working. This is one of the most asked questions that I get with D vitamin supplements <laughs> and this work is the most asked question so I thought that I would just talk about the subject I haven't prepared anything specifically usually I do kind of like a script or like a rough script of things I want to say so I'm not babbling and weird articulating I haven't filmed anything in months in any language let alone in English which is my second language so this could be kind of babbling and weird and awkward, but I hope it's still gonna be informative. But uh, let's start. So let me start from myself or about myself. I work as a nanny slash teacher's assistant in nursery, nursery slash kindergarten. So I work with um, kindergarten children and toddlers as well. And that was my education. I got then yeah, obviously education for that before I even started wearing a hijab and then I started wearing the hijab in the school and niqab only came later. I remember when I graduated and I worked for a little bit, then I got married and I moved to Egypt and I didn't have to work anymore. So I was like a housewife, desperate housewife of Egypt as if. <laughs> so um, then I didn't work for a long time. I got a child and we were moved back to Finland. And once my daughter was about one and a half years old, I started to think about towards the future when she's closer to the three years of age and I would have to go back to work. Because in Finland, you get a financial support. A couple of months after the baby's born, you get like a full salary. And then you get a little bit less money after that for a couple of months. And for a couple of years, you get some type of money to be supporting your financial life to taking care of the baby or the toddler at home. The support usually cuts at three years of age. So when the kid is three years of age, so I knew that I had to keep that eye on that and the possibility of going back to work. And I wanted to work in my own field. I wanted to work in the kindergarten because that's my, that's my kind of like my education for it. But then I was wearing the cob. So I was really desperate and I had no idea how that would come out or come about. So I just made dua to Allah, a desperate dua, saying something in the lines of, I don't know how this is gonna happen. I don't know where on earth, where in Finland could I ever work in my own field with a niqab or without having to compromise the niqab too much. And I knew that if I would go to a regular kindergarten, um, I would need to take it off during the day. And I'm gonna explain to you later how I'm doing it now, even I'm doing the same same work, can you bear with me? I didn't want to do a compromise. I heard a couple of sisters be working in the kindergarten and they, they go to the kindergarten and they take their niqab off during the day and once they leave, they put their niqab back on. Back on. <laughs> Niqabs back on. I don't know, I felt uncomfortable about that, but I was like, if I don't have any other choice, this is the route I have to go. But six months after making this dua, a sister contacted me completely unaware of my dua obviously a sister contacted me and said i heard that you are um nanny slash teacher's assistant uh we are establishing a private kindergarten would you be interested to join i was like yes please so then we had a meeting and i heard about the project and i also met 
my future colleagues or the people that were planned to work there with us then we decided to establish this kindergarten so the sister and her associates they established the kindergarten and i was just starting to work there so after six months from that meeting which is like one year after my doa i started working in this kindergarten so this is like private kindergarten that is muslim owned and we teach the children with islamic values it's not an islamic kindergarten and it's not a madrasa or anything like that it is just that we consider we take into consideration the islamic holidays and the islamic values the islamic manners etc so it, this is like an ideal working environment for someone like me alhamdulillah i know i'm really blessed in this i know many people don't have this type of opportunity but i'm just letting you guys know where i'm where i'm at this moment so how do i work in this kindergarten at this moment we don't have any men working with us so it's just the ladies and when we go inside i flip my niqab up so the ki kids obviously can see my face but once we go outside for a recess do you call it a recess in kindergarten i'm not sure but let's call it a recess in this purpose for now so once we go to recess i flip it back down in the beginning the kids were a little bit confused and they were like asking about it even all of them are muslim kids so they were a little bit confused about like oh why are you wearing that or why do you why do you wear that but they never had any problems with me like they never had had i thought in the beginning that these children who are not even they are muslim children that they are not used to being around niqabis some of them have never even met a niqabi before or talked to a niqabi before it so i was afraid that i would have some communication issues with them outside because when i was pregnant with my first child i heard from so many people that people were concerned how can you communicate with your children with niqab on we will talk about that in some other video but we didn't have any problems alhamdulillah at work kids really really fast and also the parents alhamdulillah got used to the fact that i wear it outside and i take it or i flip it up when i go inside obviously if there comes a father of a child to pick up their children from inside i flip it down that's like normal and we just communicate normally like professionally and normally so it is just the most natural alhamdulillah type of working experience so when i'm at work inside with the kids i do not wear it obviously they need to see my face and i teach them finnish language i teach them any understanding emotions and everything like that so they need to see my face and it's part of the communication when they see my face and now they are so used to the kids are so used to it alhamdulillah that if i wear it inside they ask me is there a man in here why are you wearing that because sometimes we get a, like a maintenance man or a customer or someone who is a who is a man comes inside and i keep the niqab down for those five minutes that they are inside so the kids immediately know oh, there's a man inside here i was like yeah there's a man so i have never really explained it to the children any more than just this is how i want to wear it just like some people want to wear the hijab because i let the other explanations be from the parents so alhamdulillah i've had really good experiences with this one and i just had a two years of maternity leave with my son and i started i went back to work last august that's why i have also been mia from youtube for so long because i've been along with the kids and working at the same time and trying to make it everything work but now on to the tips that i would have for you if you're considering of working and you want to wear a niqab i know most teachers or kindergarten workers any type nannies or so are not always able to do the same as i do but i just wanted to share my experience with you just so you have an information on what I'm doing and because since you guys ask also. But what my tips would be, because many people do send me emails about this subject, I would suggest that you would be working something, first think what you're good at, what's your passion. Obviously you want to do something that you're good at and you like, because then you do your work a lot better. Think about it, especially with this pandemic around us, are you able to do that from home? Are you able to do it like on your computer? Like I would suggest at these times for sisters to educate themselves or train themselves in web development 
or websites or something computer related that you could do online. If you have any designer skills, you could sell those, share and sell that skill through online around the world, inshallah. Obviously not all work can be online. So I would suggest of maybe if you're a hairdresser, you could establish your own hairdressing salon for just ladies. Now I'm really confused as well with this current situation. How do the workplaces allow face coverings when there's everybody's required wearing a mask. I guess a mask could be act, acting as a niqab. I guess you could go to work with niqab and then if they don't allow you to wear it at work, you could just wear a mask and insist on wearing the mask at work. That could handle. So you could get it a little bit easier. If you don't have any other options, like I mean like you seriously need to support your family, you don't have someone financially supporting you or you have to participate in the financial uh, burden of the family and you have to work and you don't have any other options but to go to a work that doesn't allow the niqab, then I guess you would have to work in a place that doesn't allow niqab. I'm not suggesting that you have to give up your niqab. I'm not, hopefully people who are commenting sometimes interesting things on my channel that would really consider this, that I have viewers from all around the world, literally everywhere. Like I have um, from India and Bangladesh and Australia and US and Africa and all, almost all continents. So we all live in very different situations. We all have very, very different family structures and family dynamics. Some of us have husbands, that can support for us. Some of have husbands, but can support for us. So we have to kind of like, or cannot fully support. So we have to participate in that. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of us are single and living at home. And we have to support financial our families. All of us have such different circumstances. So please consider that when you're commenting also something, oh, you, you are, you're whatever. So you just have to do what you have to do. I mean, be sincere to Allah when you're trying to find a work. See if you can build yourself a profession that you can do online or at home or in a private setting. I already don't recommend of being in a mixed environment, but I know that is not um, realistic for many people, especially in the West, but also in um, Muslim countries as well. So just really consider. And if you would be working right now in a place that doesn't allow niqab, you can do something on the side or you can try to build your own business on the side or try to find some other things on the side to be able to wear the niqab. And you can wear the niqab on your private life. No one can control your private life. So you can wear the niqab on your own time, but then if you can't wear it at work, then that's fine. But I also want you not to feel bad about that you're not wearing niqab, because I know I kind of read from some of the comments or questions that many people feel, um, they feel that they are less than, uh, less than me or less than somebody else because they can't wear a niqab or it's hard for them to wear a niqab or something. Just please don't. Please don't. You are really, you are, you are a wonderful sister. You are very precious. You are, you have value and you have modesty. You can have modesty and you can have sincerity and taqwa. You can have taqwa and closeness with Allah without niqab. I'm really telling this. If niqab is something easy that you can do and you, you feel that you want to do and you are ready to take that step and your circumstances and safety situation allows you to do that, then like that is so great. Just go for it. But if you are afraid of your safety in your own home or in the streets, really, like seriously, really, or you have experiences of this or you can't find work of any type and you really desperately need a work, then just just don't wear it. You can wear a mask at this moment. Alhamdulillah, pandemic is around like it's not a hundred I want this pandemic to go away Europe I'm sick of it at this moment but with it come blessing that maybe people like will accept the masks and covering at this part of your face so internet trolls keep your comments to yourself or like because one time I commented that alhamdulillah we have this pandemic so people understand fa face coverings now so some people really commented to me that, oh, you're so you are happy that the people are dying. Like, um, no, 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 dude or girl. I'm not happy that people are dying. I'm just saying that there's blessings in everything and there's a lot of tests in everything. I'm so sick of this situation right now, to be honest. But 
I try to find some positives about it as well. The niqab and face coverings are a good thing. On a side note, I want to say that niqab itself is not enough to be a mask. How I wear a mask is I wear the mask under my niqab. In your area or in your recommendations of your officials, that might not be enough. You might not be able to wear the niqab over the mask because of hygiene or anything. You do how you feel best and what your government recommends. But niqab in and of itself, just by itself, is not enough to be a face covering just so that people don't misunderstand me, okay? So that was all I have for you today. I hope you find this informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Inshallah, I will be making more videos in the becoming weeks. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So um, I see you in my next video, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.